Good morning. Good morning. We are happy to welcome our parishioners and guests to St. Joseph's as we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. These are today's announcements. The Holy Land collection that did not take place on Good Friday due to the pandemic will be taken up today. Please put check or cash in an envelope marked Holy Land for this collection. Thank you. Registration for religious education for kindergarten through grades 12 will be held after all Masses this weekend in the Mother Teresa Hall. This Monday, September 14th, there will be a half hour of prayer with exposition from 6.30 to 7 p.m. in the church. All are welcome. Catholic Daughters will meet this Monday, September 14th at 7 p.m. in the Parish Center. The Knights of Columbus Third Degree will meet this Monday, September 14th at 7 p.m. at the KC Hall following the Holy Half Hour in the Church at 6.30 p.m. Altar Society will meet this Tuesday, September 15th at 1.30 p.m. in the Parish Center. There will be no potluck supper due to COVID-19, just the meeting at 1.30 p.m. St. Joseph Altar Society Fall Dinner is canceled. There will still be a raffle drawing on Friday, September 25th, so all circles are asked to please get your raffle tickets and money turned in on or before Friday, September 18th. Thank you. As many of you know, in the fall of 2018, we started a project to raise money for a chapel and learning and resource center at St. Joseph's School using an old church from Lakota. The more we looked into this project and the more we heard from you, the parishioners, the internal finance committee, board of ed, and the finance council decided that the monies we raise with your help would be better used for new construction. We had a company called Walsh and Associates come in and do a feasibility study, including interviewing random parishioners, and found that we could do a capital campaign to raise the additional money that we need for the project. We were also told that if we had other projects in our parish that we would like to do, that we should add them to this capital campaign. Then we wouldn't have to ask people for money again. So we are at the point of letting you, the parishioners, know that will be happening as we move into a capital campaign to raise an additional $1.7 million for the chapel, learning and resource center, carpet in the church, loop system for the hearing impaired in the church, and new windows in the rectory. Yes, this is a brief note to you, but please watch the bulletin for more information as we move forward with this great project. Thank you. Father Wilhelm is the celebrant for this Mass. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate Holy Mass.
what the Almighty can do. morning and welcome all as we celebrate this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And our Mass today is for the good health of Amelia Malarkey and for all of the intentions that you bring to Mass today. We also are going to learn today again that God is asking us to forgive, forgive each other, forgive ourselves, also to forgive our enemy those people who have hurt us in the past. And so as we enter into this Mass, let's think about that. Have we forgiven or do we still continually actively forgive those who have hurt us some way in the past? And so as we enter into Mass, we remember our intentions, but also to pray for those who have hurt us, those people who have been unkind to us. We pray for those whom we have been unkind to, and so as we enter into Mass, let's pray along in this spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And Dear family, as we now prepare our hearts to celebrate Holy Mass, let's Open our hearts and our souls to God's healing and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our hearts through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our scripture readings. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another? and expect healing from the Lord? 
Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord, the Lord is, is kind, kind and, and merciful, merciful, slow to, to anger, anger and, and rich in compassion. compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord, the Lord is kind and merciful, merciful slow, slow to anger and, and rich in compassion. compassion. He pardons all our iniquities, heals all our, your ills, redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord, the Lord is kind and merciful, merciful slow to anger and, and rich, rich in, in compassion. compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requit us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Cleanse my heart and my lips, almighty God, that I may worthily and fittingly proclaim your holy gospel. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia, alleluia. Open our hearts to the Lord and listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, the debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, 
Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When the servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed much smaller amount and seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brothers from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for a moment. May the words of the Holy Gospel wipe away our sins. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the last five Sundays, you and I have been listening to our Lord's great homilies. He gave five great sermons in the book of Matthew, as Matthew has reported them. And remember, Matthew is speaking to the crowd of Jews. This is how he wrote his gospel. And he shows Jesus as the fulfillment of the old law. His five sermons correspond with the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. Just as a Catholic church would know. We know our Bible. We do. And those five books correspond with these five homilies that the Lord gave to us. And we're hearing them over these one more Sundays. (laughs) We're right now in that fourth sermon. And he talks to us about how we are to respond when we have been given the great grace of salvation because the kingdom of God is at hand. And Peter talks with him and says, he must have had some kind of problem and says, how often should I forgive someone who hurts me? Should I be generous as much as seven times? And the Lord says no. He says 77 times. It means ad infinitum. It means to continue to forgive as to be forgiven by God. And that's why our Lord speaks to us in this mode, in this way, because he wants us to know that we are supposed to forgive because it does something to our hearts and our souls. It might not change the person who has hurt us or who we're angry with, but it's something that changes us. There's something that happens within each and every one of us. I was watching Judge Judy the other day. I record her. I record all of these wonderful programs and I watch them at night. And there was a case, and I tell you this, I've said it before, I would appear before the judgment seat of God before I would appear before Judge Judy. She's tough, she's rough, she's mean, she's mean-spirited. I would never want to appear before her. And there was these two old grandmas, one 90 years old and one that was 80 years old. Now the 90-year-old had the car, she couldn't drive. The 80-year-old could drive, so was driving her car and they were going gambling in Nevada. What happened is the 90-year-old lady, she brought her up, got out to go to the hotel, and the 80-year-old was going to go park the car and what did she do? She hit the curb. And in her 1980 LeBaron, (laughs) uh, has special tires on. And the old 90-year-old is suing this 80-year-old because now her one rim was bent. 
and now her 1980 LeBaron looks terrible and she wants all four replaced. And she said, as they were talking, that these two old grandmas were friends for 40 years old and the nine-year-old woman said, I will not forgive her. I want nothing to do with her. Isn't that interesting? That after 40 years of friendship, that a $600 rim would separate these two old grandmas over something as small and simple as an accident. You and I live in the United States of America. We live and breathe this unforgiveness all the time. What do we have? Zero tolerance. That means once you mess up, we're done with you. Isn't that the truth? We have another saying, you fool me once, shame on you. You fool me twice, shame on me. It means after that, I no longer trust you. I want nothing to do with you. What's another saying that you and I have? Three strikes and you're out. That's right. But I want you to stay here. I want you to stay here because Jesus doesn't treat us that way. Our Lord treats us differently. And he says to us over, over again in the scriptures, that which you do to the least of your brothers, you do to me. From the cross, as he was spit upon, as he was ridiculed, as he was teased, as he was the loneliest that he had ever been, God lonely. We all have experienced loneliness before. And on the cross, what does he do? Remember, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Christians are supposed to be the leaven in the world. We're supposed to bring goodness. If there's not us out there, who is going to bring this message of Christ to others? When we have been hurt, and I'll just put it to you this way, we all have been hurt by somebody. Could be husbands, wives, children, brothers and sisters. It could have been priests. It could be the bishop. You could be mad at the pope. You could be mad at your boss. And the list goes on and on and on and on. We've all been hurt. We've been hurt by somebody. And the one thing is, where in the movement in our own hearts and our souls do we go to forgive? I think the first thing that we all have to do is we have to analyze ourselves. Bring our heart and our soul to God for forgiveness. Because one of the things is that maybe you're too sensitive. Have you ever thought of that? You're overly sensitive? You know what? You have an overly sensitive priest. I want you to know that. If I go shopping and I see you in the aisle and you and I catch eyes and you go down the other way and you don't say hi to me, I go, why didn't they say hi to me? Why didn't they smile at me? We have to look at that. You know, my parents had the top... 50 country western music of 1957 and the record had a crack in it for the first two songs but there was a third song and I don't know why I always love to listen to this record but I put it onto that third song and that third song was I think by Hank Snow and it was I have a humpty dumpty heart and the song says um, you broke my heart and all of the king's horses and all of the king's men couldn't put my heart back together again. Isn't that a beautiful country western song? They all speak about the heart. But is our hearts so broken that God can't heal us? Do you know God can heal us of anything? But one thing that God can't heal is when you're closed and you have a hardened heart. The heart that's hardened that won't let God come in to do his good operation in us. So analyze your own heart and soul and say, Lord, am I too sensitive? Do I get hurt just by a look, by a glance, by a lack of a wave? So we have to look at that. Second thing, as I say, is to pray for yourself. Lord, heal my heart and soul. I am hurting with this. This person... It could have been an accident on that person. They probably didn't know any better, but 
we have to come and say, Lord, my heart is hurting. I invite you, do your operation and heal the heart. The third thing I think that all of us have to do is we do have to pray for our enemies. We have to pray for them. If we don't pray for our enemies, I say, we get a hardened heart. And then what happens is that we start to become almost closed inside of our hearts and our souls. And that first reading from the book of Sirach really puts it so beautifully. It means that we can get eaten from the inside out. Do you know that we have very interesting species in the world? There's something called a box jellyfish, and it's a very terrible um, jellyfish that's in the ocean. But what they do is sometimes they will eat a snail. And I found this out some time ago, is that the box jellyfish, when it comes in, it eats a snail and it brings it into its stomach. Do you know what happens? Poor box jellyfish, because the snail starts eating from the inside of this box jellyfish and it kills the box jellyfish. It's being eaten from the inside out. That's what unforgiveness does. It eats us alive. And this is why our Lord calls us to forgiveness because it might do nothing for the person who's hurt us, but it has everything to do with our relationship with God. Lastly, trust and depend that God can do it, no matter how terrible it could be. From someone in our family killed by another, all the way to something simple as a lack of kindness. All of those things can be forgiven. Today in Mass, isn't it interesting that we pray in the Our Father, forgive us our trespasses because we sin, and you have forgiven us, Lord, and that demands us to forgive another. So will my Heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother or sister from the heart. May our God be forever blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There goes my homily. It's all done. <laughs>
that which you did to the least, you did it for me. Lord, give us strength in our Christian friendship with you that we may continue to forgive others and to bring this forgiveness into a hurting world. Hear our prayers today. For the Church and all the Christians in the Holy Land, may they be protected from all discrimination and may they receive the support they need to preserve the holy sites of Christ's birth, death, and resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all in medical care and the medical sciences, may God continue to give them the knowledge, skills, and compassion to care for the sick and seek ways to end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our farmers, ranchers, and all who work in agriculture, may they be protected from all harm and be granted the proper weather for a bountiful harvest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, through the intercession of Our Lady of Sorrows, may they know the consolation of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our project of building the new St. Mary's Chapel and Learning Resource Center, by the generosity of our good people, may we be able to raise the funds we need to begin this project. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all married couples, especially Tanner Armstrong and Ashton Pizik, who were married this weekend, that they would grow in their love and commitment to each other through the grace of the sacrament of marriage, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Cage Emmanuel Germain and Louis Ellen Freidig, who were baptized this weekend, May the Holy Spirit lead them throughout their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who have died in our parish, especially Doris Hoffert and Lloyd Stromy, and for the living Amelia Malarkey, whom this Holy Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, may we forgive immediately. May we receive forgiveness from others. And may we open our hearts and our souls that they may not become hardened and that we may continue to be faithful to the callings that you have given us, the calling of holiness. And holiness brings forth kindness, Kindness brings forth joy, and joy brings forth your love into this world. As you live and reign, our great and holy God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our offertory procession. We'll run and not grow weary 
So our God shall be our strength, and we will fly like the eagles. We'll rise again. Pray, family, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Heavenly Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim and pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Remember our needs and intentions and place them on this altar. And especially let's remember those who hurt or are hurting us in any way. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Let's pray together. The second acclamation. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Let's remember our loved ones who have gone to God. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. How our Lord taught this prayer to his own disciples, his apostles, and we continue to pray this prayer today. Let's remember to pray for those who trespass against us, and we pray for those we have hurt as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your church peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This mingling of the body and the blood of 
our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death brought life to the world, free me by this your most holy body and blood from all of my sins and from every evil, every act of unforgiveness. Save me always, and may I receive your grace this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold Jesus, the healer. Behold Jesus, the forgiver. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. For those joining on Facebook, we offer that prayer that they make a spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are present, body, blood, soul, and divinity upon this altar. I am unable to receive you at this time. I ask that I receive all the graces necessary in my life, that I will remain faithful to you, that I will serve you with an undivided heart and that I may bring your love and peace into a world that is divided by hate and division. We ask you, dear Blessed Mother, as you stood by Jesus on the cross, stand also by us poor sinners. And we ask you, dear Holy Saint Joseph, as you protected the Holy Family, protect this Holy Family here and those who are at home Keep us safe, healthy, and that we may serve you with our heart and our soul as you live and reign, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless your child, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. And may Almighty God bless you as you prepare your heart for communion. Catlin, the body of Christ.
Stand and let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, we pray, O Lord, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two quick announcements is that following Mass, as you heard in the announcements, is that we have religious education sign up for our elementary and for our junior and senior high. And it's very important that we sign up. Uh, we won't be doing the usual classes that we have. We'll be sending things home. And we also have something called um, formed. And what it is, is that there are certain things that we're going to ask you to watch with your children uh, together, but on there, there's great Catholic movies, great Christian movies, uh, talks. It's just a wonderful part of uh, the new way that we can go and watch movies and things on the Internet. And so uh, that's going to be given to all of our students and to the families. And so I ask you to sign up. And then we'll be meeting once a month here um, at the church with some of those groups separate and so just look forward to that and uh, let's do our best during this COVID-19 to try to work through all of this because it'll change from month to month and so I ask that if you're a grandparent or a parent to get your children that are not at our Catholic school signed up for religious education. Secondly, um, as we talk about, there's this great Fatima movie I talked about last Sunday. If you haven't watched it, rent it. They're on all sorts of things on the computer or Hulu. If you don't have a computer, ask your grandchild or great-grandchild, and they will watch it and help you get it. It's 1995, but it should have been out in the theaters. But since our theaters are closed, um, you can watch the show. I'm going to tell you, I was moved to tears three wonderful times by watching that show, and it still is with me. It's not very often that we have a Catholic show that's all across the nation, so I'm asking you to watch this movie for yourselves and with your families. Have a good week. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.